Hey guys, Keith here with a Bound for Glory 2017 preview and predictions video. So, Bound for Glory seems like the time of year when every fan freaks out that Impact Wrestling, TNA, GFW is going out of business. Uh, last year, there were rumors that WWE was buying their tape library and... Billy Corgan was buying them out and all sorts of stuff because I remember tuning into Bound for Glory 2016 with the anticipation that something was going to happen and nothing happened. Um, so Impact had stated that the venue has completely sold out for Bound for Glory, which is good to hear. I talked about that on my review. Um, they also posted that if you order Bound for Glory through the fight.tv app you will get three months free of the global wrestling network which is a pretty smart thing to do considering they've partnered with fight tv or fight.tv whatever you want to call them um also heard today that earl hebner is no longer with the company him brian hebner and i forget the other guy's name spilner something to that extent um so they have no referees and Apparently, I guess when you're working in Canada, if you use local talent, you uh, if you use enough people from Canada, you will get a tax break. So that seems to be what they're doing here. Um, I'm pretty sure that what I had said on my review is that I wouldn't be surprised if they just picked everything up and moved to Canada and started doing everything from there. And if all their referees have left the company. I'm pretty sure that seems like what's going on. So, anyway, let's get to the matches. So, I didn't really put these in any order. I just kind of threw them together, you know, non-title matches together. Um, so, up first, we have Team Impact, which is EC3, Eddie Edwards, and James Storm versus Team AAA, which is Pagano, Tejano, and Phantasma. Um, haven't seen much of Pagano over the last couple weeks, I believe. Um, I would assume that Team Impact would win this match. I don't know if they're planning on bringing any other AAA stars into that, into Impact. I mean, that would be the only way I could see them winning and this being a continuing feud otherwise i see team impact winning and it kind of ending from here just depends where they go i mean a lot of things are up in the air up next i put the red wedding match between taya valkyrie and rosemary so they had one match together on impact a couple weeks ago which taya won so I would expect that Rosemary would win this match, considering she's the one that picked the stipulation as well. Um, next, we got the Monsters Ball match between Abyss and Grado. If Grado loses, he will have to his work visa will be terminated, and he will have to leave the country. Um, I, I don't see Grado losing this match, just for the simple fact that I don't see him leaving the company. I mean. Oh. What am I talking about? If they're moving to Canada, this would work out perfectly. So maybe he, uh, maybe he won't win. Hmm. Now nah, I'll still pick him to win. I would assume maybe someone will come in on his behalf, um, setting up a feud with Abyss further down the line. Um, otherwise, it, it doesn't really matter if they're really not in the U.S. Um. Next up is the first of the title matches, which, I'm, I'm like I said, I just grouped them all together. The uh, X Division title match, which champion Trevor Lee will be defending against Ex Desmond Xavier, Petey Williams, Matt Seidel, Sanjay Dutt, and Garza Jr. Um, I am fine with anybody winning this match. Uh, I think all are very good talent. Um, the person I would probably least like to see him win the match is Sanjay, mainly because he's kind of taken a backstage role. Um, he's working with the creative with uh, Dutch Mantel and uh, Scott Damore, and I think that's really going to need to be his focus, so I don't see him winning the title. Um, I'd like to see Garza Jr. be um, utilized more in the company, just to the simple fact that he gets a good crowd reaction. 
He's good in the ring. He's got a great look. They're, they definitely have something they can build off of here. Um, Desmond Xavier got the win on Impact last night, uh, which was basically this same match, just non-title. So I do not see him winning the match. Uh, Matt Seidel, again, he's uh, kind of wanted to get out of the X Division when he beat Lashley, which gave him a title shot at, I believe it was uh, Eli, uh, a couple months back. So uh, he's going to go on to do bigger and better things. Um, and I don't see Trevor Lee retaining. The odds are stacked against him, but I wouldn't be surprised. He would be my number two pick, but my number one pick would ultimately be Petey Williams, only on the fact that he's in Canada, or he's from Canada, the pay-per-view is happening in Canada, and I think that would give them good publicity if they have a Canadian champion. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to go with Petey Williams. Next up, we have the triple threat for the women's title with the champion Sienna defending against Allie and Gail Kim. Um, Allie picked up the victory in a tag team match that was shown on Impact this past week from Border City Wrestling. Do not see her winning the title. Um, well, I think the right decision would be for Sienna to hold on to the title because I don't think there's anybody ready yet to take the title from her. And the other opponent is Gail Kim, and this is her last bound for glory. They've made it a big deal. So I expect her to win the title and retire it. So I'm going with Gail Kim. Um, if she wins and retires with it, I would love to see a tournament to crown a new women's champion which, like I said in my Impact review, that Tessa Blanchard has been rumored to be a part of the Impact tapings, along with uh, um, the woman who was uh, on the tag match against Allie and... Uh, oh, Casey Spinelli, that's it. She's rumored to be there as well, so... I'm I'm sure they could find other talents, local Canadian talent, to partake in this if they do do a tournament. So, yeah, I'm picking Gail Kim. Up next, we have what I think will probably be the best match of the night. I mean, the, any match can honestly steal the show. But that's the uh, tag team title match with OVE defending against LAX in a 51-50 street fight. Um, Conan said a couple weeks back that I believe Homicide will be returning for Bound for Glory. And this is not just two versus two. This is La Familia versus OVE. So there will be a lot more involved than just uh, the two of them. And like we said, uh, saw two weeks ago where uh, OVE had said that you guys don't think we have family, and then we saw the picture of an arm with tattoos on it, which is Sammy Callahan's arm. So, you know, they bring Sammy in, and I think this would be a much more even fight. They might be bringing other people as well, but um, I'm picking OVE for this one. I think that they should have had LAX hold the titles up till... Bound for glory, and then lose them here rather than lose them at Victory Road. I, I just feel like OVE would uh, would um, completely have the card stacked against them, and then pick an uh, you know an extra uh, person to help them against LAX. But whatever, I'm fine with the way it's played out. I've really uh, grown to like OVE, and after watching a lot of their ind independent stuff. Like I had seen Dave Chris versus Tessa Blanchard at Wrestle Circus uh, a couple weeks back, and that was a great match. Um, they're doing good stuff on the indies, and uh, I like where Impact is heading if they're continuing to fill their roster with this type of talent. Uh, up next, this is probably my least favorite match of the night. It's uh, Stefan Bonner and Moose versus Bobby Lashley and King Mo. Um, like I said in my Impact review, don't know where they're going after Bound for Glory with this whole American Top Team uh, angle. I would assume that they'll kind of go do their own thing. Lashley can be a competitor again because he's not leaving the company. He's still under contract. And uh, I accept, accept, 
expect Bonner and Moose to win this match. Um, this is a cage match, by the way, so uh, things should get pretty intense. But yeah, Bonner and Moose to win. And that brings us to the main event. Or, well, I guess this match could be swapped out with the uh, Bonner Moose versus Lashley and King Mo because of the fact that they've been hyping that match so much. Granted, the championship match should always end a pay-per-view. But anyway, it's Impact champion Eli Drake defending against Johnny Impact. Um, I would love to see Eli retain the title. But unfortunately, I don't think that's going to happen. I think Johnny is going to win the title. Um, he has a lot of fans, a lot of, uh, always gets a big pop in the arenas, and he's a great talent. Um, I would personally keep the title on Eli, but him chasing the title as well would probably be very good. Uh, I don't know how Impact is with doing PR work and stuff like that, so he may help get eyes on the company and things like that. But, uh, yeah, this should be a very good show. It is Sunday, November 5th, 8 p.m., pay-per-view, available on Fight TV. And as I said earlier on, if you order Bound for Glory through Fight TV, you get three months of the Global Wrestling Network for free. So I will see you guys back here for a Bound for Glory review. Until then... This has been my preview and prediction video for Bound for Glory 2017. If you like what you've seen here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye!